I have no idea. I have no idea, honestly, how America is not just bats not crazy about what's going on with the White House and amnesty. What is happening on our border is is so far out of law, is so far, it is, it's anarchy. Our president now is hiring attorneys with your money to defend those people who are on our border coming here as children. And why are they, why are they coming here as children? Uh, because the president told them to, and we'll back that up with the facts at five o'clock today. And uh, it's very clear and very easy to make this case. But now he's declared a humanitarian crisis. This is going to be the thing that we are going to be talking about for the next 12 months. Easy. And this may be the beginning of the end of the of the nightmare. It really, it really, this may be it. This may be the camel that breaks, or the, the straw that breaks the camel's back. Because it's Cloward and Piven turned all the way up the republicans are playing the same game uh tomorrow there is an election in virginia and eric Cantor is um running for his um district again primary is tomorrow this is the ultimate establishment gop against the tea party candidate Dave is a, a Dave Brad is running against um, uh, Eric Cantor, and he's he is an economics professor. He has his master's in divinity. Uh, Doc Thompson, Laura Ingram, uh, Pat and Stu have talked to him and are big fans. I have not talked to him yet, but uh, Dave is on the phone with us now to correct that. Hello, Dave. How are you? Hey, Glenn. Absolute honor to be on with you. Tell me what I mean. If if Eric Cantor gets in and is reelected. We are going to have amnesty. Do you believe that? Oh, I don't believe it. I, I know it is a fact. He goofed up on our local news, CBS News, last Friday and said he is going to work with Obama for the kids. And those kids you're talking about, are 100,000 are flooding over the border right now as we speak. Uh, Eric Holder today said they're going to increase funding for lawyers to protect these kids. And we're paying $250 a day per child uh, to house them under the federal government nanny state right now. And so, I, I, I mean, I can't believe disaster. I cannot believe that we're hiring attorneys, that we're sending FEMA out. We've got the AmeriCorps out. We're buying airline tickets to ship them from Texas to Arizona. We're spending all of this money, and yet we can't get anyone to fix the VA. It's, it's obscene, Dave, what's happening. Yeah. Yeah, well, right on the money. And Eric Cantor was just on the morning show here on the radio, <clears throat> and I just got off. And he said he's against uh, all of this. He's got flyers saying he's 100% opposed to any amnesty. Right. In deceptive mailers, he's pivoted 100% uh, to get by the uh, primary. So you're right. This is it. The country's on the line. If you think amnesty is key, I need your support, financial support today. Go to Dave Bratt for Congress. Email everybody you know in, in the 7th District and tell them to vote the right way tomorrow. Or Eric Hanner, within a week, he'll pivot right back, and you'll have amnesty full-blown. You and, have... uh, I, I just want to make it clear. I, I went to seminary. I love every single person on this planet. They're all children of God. That's not the issue. I teach uh, third-world development, and if you want to help them, those kids want to come here because we're the richest nation on earth, and we have the rule of law. So the best thing to do is to keep that seriousness about the rule of law and help Mexico and these other countries establish private property rights and the rule of law, as, as many Nobel laureates in economics have, have taught us over the years. Um, tell me, um, you are being outraised, fund, fund, fundraising, 25 to 1. Yeah, how, that, are you, that, how are yeah. you even competitive in this race? Right. Well, I, <clears throat> I have faith in God, and I got on my door, Luke 18, 27, uh, with man, many things are impossible. With God, all is possible. <clears throat> and it's not only possible. We closed uh, the polls to within 10% as of a couple weeks ago. Then Laura Ingram came to town. I'm on your show with Doc. Uh, Mark Levin called us out, Ann Coulter. And now we're just soaring. I'm going to win on Tuesday. I honestly think I'm going to win the thing on Tuesday because the people are finally going to be empowered. And they know it. The elites that want amnesty, the elites that want different laws of the land for everybody, Obamacare, big business gets exempted, right? Unions get exempted. Congressmen and their staff get exempted. That's not the rule of law anymore. We're writing different laws for different groups of people in this country. It's un-American. 
I will tell you, Dave, we, we have been so gravely disappointed by the results of elections here. It seems as though many of the GOP, they're just going and just going right belling back up right at the trough with people like Mitch McConnell. I mean, you don't have to convince me that Eric Cantor is, is a guy who has sold us a load of goods. What you have to do is convince me, why should I reach into my pocket and give you money today or do any work? Because a lot of people are listening to us and going, I don't believe in any of this stuff anymore. I don't I, think anybody's going to. I mean, I, I have, I'm, I'm waiting for the hand of God. I'm waiting for things. And yeah. give, why should I do that? Yeah, well, I'm on what I call the Plato plan, right? Plato said, wait till you're 50 and you're done with wine, women, and song. Eric Cantor's been a lifetime uh, professional politician. I went to seminary, got a Ph.D. in economics. I've been serious. I'm running on term limits for myself and everybody else. That's a huge differentiator. I'm running with a pledge to meet all, every county, the people in every county of my district once a month, right? I got nine counties in the city. That's a huge commitment to actually meet and represent the people. That's the job description, to be a representative of the people. And so it, it's that clear. It's that decisive. He's backing big business 100 percent. He's throwing the people in the district under the bus with low wages, losses in jobs due to amnesty, Obamacare, regulations, $2 trillion of our economy, according to Cato. And he's doing nothing on the entitlement. You know, the biggest number in the books is $127 trillion. He hasn't mentioned it, neither has the Democrat side, and our country's in the ditch because of it. And so we need free market principles. We need freedom-loving uh, conservatives to, to get in office. And uh, I'm going to do my best to tell the truth and uh, make it happen. I talked to Stephen Moore last week, and um, he's with the Wall Street Journal and yep. uh, the Heritage Foundation, uh, 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 quite, quite a brilliant um, economic um, thinker. Uh, along with, um, uh, oh shoot, I can't think of his name, uh, the Reagan uh, guy, Art Laffer. Right. And, um, and they both think that this is a pretty quick turnaround, that this, the, the, the pent up investment and the pent up energy behind this uh, country that is seemingly losing its way is easy to unleash. If we can get the right people in office, do you believe that, or do you think we're too far gone to have something easy? No, I'm I'm an optimist like Ronald Reagan. I mean, I believe in the American people. If you let them have the entrepreneurial spirit we've always had, right? I mean, the Judeo-Christian tradition is the tradition of this country, and that created the rule of law, the work ethic, uh, and and free markets go absolutely with that. We don't believe in any special privileges for anyone in this country. And right now, all we have is special privileges, right? Fannie and Freddie did two-thirds of all subprime mortgages, put the bankers out of business, ruined the housing market, then the financial sector. And so, yeah, if you didn't have that, and what did Eric Hanner do about that? He and Obama did the same thing. Those guys, instead of going to jail, they got bailouts, they got TARP, and they're on the Rolodex of the high rollers up there. So we need to get rid of all of them. It's time for term limits. Dave, if I could back up just a second, because this is such a, an important issue right now, and they're loading up our border with uh, illegal alien children, and they're going to use that against us to get uh, comprehensive immigration reform jammed on our throats. How is it that, how is, is Cantor pa- parsing words here? Is he just saying that this comprehensive immigration reform plan isn't amnesty? Is he going on that technicality? Is that how he's saying he's not for amnesty? Right, right. He's saying he, right. And he's just he wants. Is, you know, I mean, he's pretty it, open about the fact. He's a pathway. Yep. He's, he's pretty way. open about the fact that he wants this immigration reform. Right. He's just saying yeah. that that's not yeah. amnesty. He's, he's the author of the House principles, yeah. right, which is right. six point five million illegal immigrants. And I do want to stress that illegal. The Senate plans eight. So he parses words by saying he's against the Senate plan. Well, he's for the House plan, which is about identical. He's also for the Enlist Act which encourages uh, people, illegals, to join up for our military and use the military as a pathway to citizenship. So we have illegals, and the generals and admirals are just horrified at that prospect. He's the author of the Kids Act, the Dream Act. Yeah, I was going to say, he's for the Dream Act, too. Yeah, Right, right, and that's all the kids, and then... You know, what's next? You know, the Democrats, the, the immediate reaction will be, well, you, you're not going to be so cruel as to keep them from their parents. You've got to let them in and then their extended family and whatever, right? I mean, it's just the logic. The logic, the proof is on the border right now. Once you announce to the kids that there's a Kids Act, 
kids come across the border without their parents. And that the evidence is in. Yeah. Devil's advocate here, though, Dave. I mean, you have this situation where obviously the demographics are going in a way in which there's a higher and higher percentage of of Hispanic voters, among other minority groups. These groups, if you don't address these groups individually, we're told that they're never going to vote for you. If the if the percentages continue to go in the way that they're going now, you're never going to win another national election. So how do you do nothing here? What do you do to make uh, people, uh, you know, come along to your side of the argument without uh, without breaking your principles. Yeah, the, no, it's easy. The, the Hispanic community uh, it has one awesome thing in common with us that, of course, our Republicans are too wimpy to point out, and it's called the Judeo-Christian tradition. They're great Catholics. They believe in God's law. They're great family people. They believe in the rule of law. And it, they don't believe in violate, right? I mean, we're, it, we're making the assumption that they're in favor of some sort of illegal act. That's absolutely false, and if we go down that road, it would be the worst thing that we ever did. And so we need a compassionate society, but it has to be built on the rule of law. And so, yeah, there's no turning back. We need to go to all people and sell the Republican principles. There's one reason all the people are coming here. We're the richest nation on earth. And China, for the first time in world history, is feeding 1.2 billion people, right? How'd that happen? Because they're finally going free market. We're uh, talking to Dave Bratt, who is running. Tomorrow is the primary in Virginia. He is running against Eric Cantor, and he, he's being outspent 25 to 1. He's within a couple of uh, points, uh, 10 points two weeks ago, but um, uh, there has been a, a surge, uh, according to Dave's people, there's been a surge, and you believe you can win this tomorrow. You, he is a, you can find out more about him and also how to donate or send out information. It is all coming down to turnout tomorrow, Dave Bratt for Congress.com. Uh, Dave, one more thing. Where, where do you stand on the NSA situation? Where, where do you stand on spying on the American people? Necessary or uh, are we going way too far? No, way too far. It's the group rights thing, right? I'm with Rand Paul in terms of if you want to look up information on me and there's a good reason for national security to do that, there may be, right? Well, go get an individual warrant. Uh, there's nothing constitutional about these gigantic uh, group warrants. And so, you know, that's it. And I just want to tell the, all the listeners, too, right? I'm, I'm pro-life. I'm pro-Second Amendment. Eric is sending out dozens of flyers saying I've led the Women's March for pro-choice and that I'm going to throw Grandma off the cliff. He's mm -hmm. using every Democratic tactic I've ever seen. And it, it, the people know in our district that it's false, right? But there are some seniors who he's taking advantage of them. And uh, so I, I appreciate you guys letting me get the word out. And uh, I hope everyone listening will email anyone they know in the 7th District to spread the word. Every, I've tried to tell the absolute truth. And as Glenn pointed out on his show the other day, I don't have anything against Eric personally. We just differ on principle, and uh, I'm, I'm running on the, the foundational American principles and a, and a pledge and a promise to put them into action as soon as I get there. Dave, the best of luck to you tomorrow. We need people um, like you to be able to get in and hold some of these guys, their feet to the fire, because we're, we are, as you're seeing, and you're evidence of it, and so is everybody else that has been running. The Republicans are doing everything they can to destroy the idea of small government. They'll, they'll label it any way they want, and they'll lie about it if they have to. But they are using the entire machinery of the uh, U.S. government and Congress to chew people up, 25 to 1 being outspent. And for it to be this close says an awful lot. This will be the last time these guys, if any of these guys win, it will be the last time because there's no way you could, you could be this close with this many years in Congress. You won't have the power in two years or four years or six years to be able to do this one again. Dave, thank you very much. I appreciate it. Pleasure to be on. Thanks, and glad, God bless you all. Thank you very much. Uh, Dave Bratt for Congress.com. Remember that clip a few years ago where the MSNBC host was going against the Tea Party and said something to the effect of, like, oh, well, do you have a degree in economics? And the guy responded, uh, yes, I do, ma'am. Highest honors. Oh, my God, that's that? right. That's it's him? not the same guy, oh. but it, it, it's he also has a degree in economics. So it opens yes. us up to yet another one of those wonderful, glorious moments if Dave Bratt can get into Congress. Uh, so we can have some and dumb also, MSNBC um, uh, A master's in divinity. 
Yeah. I mean, here's a guy who who knows it and can preach it, actually preach it. Yeah, really interesting and, combination. Yeah, it? because but they'll go they go hand in hand. Mm -hmm. To me, though, they go hand in hand. It, science in economics shows you that the way to take care of people is through the private charitable heart organizations. That's the only way it will work. If you want a free market, that is the key. For the government to do less, we as individuals and charitable organizations must do more.